<laughs> Sometimes an idea might seem amazing and iconic on paper, but when an actor actually has to go in front of a camera and perform a certain scene, well, let's just say hindsight is 2020. These particular scenes will certainly make the actors involved blush or perhaps run to the hills. What's worse is that fans might not let actors forget about that particular scene, meaning it continues to haunt them years after the film debuted. We are going to break down some embarrassing, regretful, and awkward scenes that these actors will totally wish got edited out of the final cut. Chris Hemsworth is best known for his work as the God of Thunder in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. You're all not worthy. Uh. The role of Thor launched the Australian actor into superstardom thanks to his lovable performance and supermodel looks. To help bring Thor to life, Hemsworth has had to train vigorously for each movie to bulk up, and Marvel wanted to let you know how ripped he was in each movie. Pretty cut. But despite putting all the work into his body, Hemsworth isn't the biggest fan of showing off his abs to the world. He was pretty hesitant about taking his top off in Thor The Dark World, but in the end, caved in and shot the scene, despite not being convinced as to its importance in the movie. The same issue would occur again in Thor Ragnarok, despite him believing that Taika Waititi wanted him fully clothed for the whole movie. But Taika thought the movie could use a little shirtless Hemsworth, and wrote in a scene under the belief that Thor's abs would net a bigger profit. But Thor Ragnarok went on to gross 854 million globally. Hemsworth, however, is still upset that he had to do the scene. Don't expect one in Thor Love and Thunder. Amelia Clark is a household name now, thanks to her involvement in HBO's hit fantasy show, Game of Thrones. Where are my dragons? Those who have watched the show will no doubt know that the show is chock full of violence and lots of people who seem to have lost their clothing. Awkwardly, however, but not that unexpected considering it was her first role, her parents ended up being big fans of the show. To prevent any awkward encounters, she told her parents to skip over certain scenes or episodes to save them and herself the embarrassment of bearing it all in front of her family. And for the most part, her plan succeeded, and Clark wrote a no-nudity clause into her contract after the third season. Her parents were safe until it came time for the fourth episode of the sixth season. After promising she wasn't going to take it off ever again for the show, Clark bared it all in a surprise move. The thing is, she forgot to tell her parents about her decision to take it off one more time. What's worse is she watched that episode with her parents. Oh dear. Big Little Lies Season 1 was one of the most critically acclaimed shows of that year. It won big at various awards programs, with Nicole Kidman winning Best Performance by an Actress at the Golden Globes and Outstanding Lead Actress at the Emmys. Kidman plays with harrowing conviction, a character named Celeste, who is constantly demonized and physically abused by her husband, played by Alexander Skarsgård. Despite earning so much praise for the role, Kidman actually regrets participating in the scenes that showed Celeste being abused. She felt drained and humiliated doing the scenes and didn't feel the energy or inspiration to continue on with certain scenes. It got so bad for Kidman on set that director Jean-Marc Vallée had to put a towel over her head between takes when she was on the edge of having a breakdown due to the stress. At least she had support on set and likely at home as well. Award and praise is one thing, but if work is causing you to stress out that badly, we can understand why one may not have wanted those experiences, even if they're fictional. It's not much of a secret that Suicide Squad didn't do so well for Warner Bros. or the DCEU. The film was a critical failure, and despite being a box office hit, it was not well received by fans either. The film is being soft rebooted with James Gunn at the helm in hopes of righting the wrongs of the predecessor. Thankfully, Margot Robbie won't have to worry about doing a certain scene again, because she absolutely hated the experience. We're bad guys, it's what we do. Robbie had a few issues with Suicide Squad. While she felt self-conscious about the skimpy costume and hated the spiky gold bangles, there was an entire scene that the Australian actress wishes that she didn't do. The scene in question is when Harley Quinn falls into the chemical vat during her character's origin. She stated in an interview that the scene was the most unpleasant experience of her life. Thanks largely to the liquid, which she described as gluggy paint stuff, that stuff caused her to choke and when it glazed over her eyelids, they would get stuck, causing her to only see white. It sounds like a miserable and pretty scary experience, and we can understand why Robbie would never want to do it again. Hopefully it didn't need too many takes. 
Most actors, we can imagine, would love to be in a Star Wars movie. It's the opportunity of a lifetime, with many actors being content in being an uncredited extra in the background simply to say that they've been a part of the experience. But there is one actor who absolutely hated his time on set of The Phantom Menace, and it had nothing to do with Jar Jar Binks. How woo! Terrence Stamp showed up in Episode 1, The Phantom Menace, to play Chancellor Valorum, but he didn't take on the role to be a part of the Star Wars family. On the contrary, he had a bit of a soft spot for Natalie Portman and was hoping that his scenes on Coruscant would cross over with the young talent. He agreed to do the scene for really lousy pay in exchange for the scene with Portman. The pay was so bad that Stamp referred to it as two and six and a toffee apple. Despite the promise and the bad pay, Stamp never got a scene with Natalie Portman. Instead, he had to do the scene with a strip of paper, which doubled in for Natalie Portman. The two Two actors would then be edited in together. Not only was he acting against a strip of paper, but Stamp called the scenes boring and ultimately regretted taking the role. There are a lot of reasons why you might not like Fifty Shades of Grey. The films weren't particularly well received, despite their massive box office hauls, and the source material comes down to being Twilight fanfic. But beyond the poor writing and questionable motivations of the characters, there are some parts of the movie that Dakota Johnson regrets doing, despite the role boosting her career. In the film and the novel, Johnson's Anastasia Steele enters a contract with the billionaire Christian Grey, acquiescing to his every whim and desire. Of course, Christian is a freak in the sheets and has some pretty wild interests. Despite the natural kink of the scenarios, Johnson said that the raunchier scenes of the movie were the absolute worst thing and not fun to do. Being a movie, the scenes required multiple takes, so she would be gagged, blindfolded, and bound for many takes on end. Due to the nature of set lights, it was also incredibly hot, and not in a steamy way. Overall, she would cite the experience as emotionally taxing and just wanted it to be over with. What's more is that Christian Grey actor Jamie Dornan also confessed to having a miserable time on set and and both actors confessed to being embarrassed and ashamed of the films. Perhaps that explains the lack of chemistry between the leads? Speaking of bearing it all on screen, we couldn't do this list without talking about the big one. We're of course referring to Sharon Stone's infamous role as Catherine Trammell in the film Basic Instinct. The character was a femme fatale and could manipulate men with incredible ease. There's a scene in the movie in which Catherine is being interrogated by police. There is a considerable distance between Catherine and the cops, and director Paul Verhoeven took advantage of this in more ways than one. Initially, the cops were the ones with all the power in the scene, but thanks to uncrossing and crossing her legs, she regained the power. There's just one problem. Verhoeven came to Stone and told her that she would have to take her underwear off for the scene. This was because the white material was interfering with the shot, but he promised that nothing would be shown as innuendo and implication would be a lot more effective for the shot. However, this was not the case in the film, and Stone showed a lot more of herself than she initially bargained for. Stone only found out about her infamous Flash when she saw the movie for the first time. The inclusion of the graphic scene got Verhoeven a slap in the face from Stone. Having a fake steamy scene in front of rolling cameras is likely to get a lot of actors a little anxious, especially if it's the first time they've done such a scene. This is exactly what happened with Jennifer Lawrence when it came time to film a love scene with then-married Chris Pratt for their film Passengers. She felt incredibly guilty getting so intimate with a married man, even if it was in a movie. So she did the only thing she thought was a good idea, got really, really drunk before doing the scene. Lawrence states that she doesn't remember the shoot very well, but also said that, due to her inebriated state of mind, she also got even more anxious as she began overthinking everything from the fact that she was kissing a married man to worrying about the shots themselves. Talk about a bad day at the office. This has less to do with showing off too much of one's body and more to do with seriously maiming the body in the name of getting a shot just right. The winner of that prize goes to the late Burt Reynolds, who was maybe feeling a little too masculine in the 70s to let a stunt double work on the movie Deliverance. But perhaps he should have toned down the male ego because Burt got the short end of the stick in this movie. And not only that, but the shot didn't come out that great either when the actor decided he was going to paddle a canoe down a waterfall himself. At no point does this sound like a good idea, but Reynolds was adamant that no double or dummy would take his place. 
Reynolds ultimately paddled the canoe off of a waterfall and almost instantly hit a rock. Shattering his pelvis, hit his head and shoulder on a rock, was knocked unconscious, swept down river, and had all of his clothes torn off. He woke up in a hospital. The director of the movie, John Borman, told Reynolds that he looked like a dummy going down the waterfall in the end when asked how the shot came out. Titanic was, well, a Titanic hit at the box office, claiming the number one spot at the box office until Avatar dethroned it 12 years later. The film combined James Cameron's action spectacle with a romance story, ensuring mass appeal for various demographics. But there's one part of the movie that isn't so appealing for actress Kate Winslet, especially after all this time. Towards the end of the movie, Winslet's Rose asks, Jack, I want you to draw me like one of your French girls. Rose bears it all for Jack, who sketches her in her most vulnerable and exposed moment in front of the man she's grown very fond of. Yet this romantic moment was ruined by creepy fans who constantly try to get Kate Winslet to sign photos of her nude self. She'd really like those fans to stop asking, as it makes her feel incredibly uncomfortable being asked that. She never signs those photos either, as she's married, has kids, and has done plenty of other award-winning movies since Titanic. But some fans just keep on coming back to that scene from Titanic, a scene that seems to be haunting Winslet as it appears these fans are only interested in her body and likely only want to sell the signed photos online. No wonder Kate isn't fond of the scene. She's done way more, guys. 